Some people are dog people. Some people are cat people. But what if you could have the best of both worlds? What if you could have a pet fox? Well, on today's podcast, we'll be discussing how one man's quest to solve a puzzle domesticated the fox, what we have learned from his experiment, and how communistic non-science and reasoned adherence to unreality almost stopped it from happening. Our story begins with a Russian man named Dmitry Berliev. I will call him Dmitry throughout the podcast because I'm British and saying Russian names is hard, so please don't take this as me denigrating his work or life because I do not mean it to be so. Anywho, young Dmitry was influenced by his older brother who was a geneticist and as a result Dmitry was a Darwinist and a believer in the Mendelian process of genetic inheritance, all beliefs which would place him in great danger later in his life. In the late 1930s, Dmitry was a student at the Ayovana Agricultural Academy in Moscow. After he graduated, he fought for the Soviet Union in World War II, and once the war was over, he gained a job at the Institute of Fur Breeding Animals in Moscow. As a result of reading Darwin's 1868 book, The Variation of Animals and Plants on Domestication, and his interaction with domesticated animals at the Ivona Agricultural Academy, and at the Institute of Fur Breeding Animals, Dmitry recognised that many domesticated species shared many similar qualities, including floppy ears, short curly tails, juvenile facial and body features, reduced stress hormone levels, and a relatively long reproductive season when compared to the wild counterparts. Today, this suit of physical traits is known as domestication syndrome. Dmitry understood that different species were domesticated for different reasons. For example, horses were domesticated for transportation, dogs for protection and hunting, and cattle for food. But despite this variance, all domesticated species over time begin to display this domestication syndrome. And Dmitri found this puzzling, but a puzzle so tempting he had to solve it. He hypothesized that the one thing our ancestors required in a species that they were domesticating was an animal that could interact prosocially with humans. This meant, according to his theory and his belief in genetic inheritance, that all animals' domestication events require humans to selectively breed together only the most pro-human animals, and the ultimate end of which will be an animal with the right genetics for being tame. With this hypothesis in hand, Dmitri set out to see if he was wrong or right, and he chose a silver fox, a variant of the red fox, to be his test subjects. Starting in 1959 at the Institute of Cytology and Genetics in Novosibirsk, Siberia, Dmitri and his protégé, a 25-year-old lady called Lyumdmila Trutt, developed a tameness score and measured all their foxes against it, choosing only the top 10% of highest scoring foxes to parent the next generation. He did this for every generation of foxes, testing hundreds of foxes, and again only choosing the top 10% tamest to breed. Dmitri used the following methodology. Starting at one month of age and continuing every month throughout the infancy, the foxes are tested for their reaction to a human experimenter. The experimenter would attempt to pet and handle the fox while offering it food. In addition, the experimenter would note if the fox preferred to spend time with other foxes or the human. After the fox had reached sexual maturity at the age of seven or eight months, they would have their final test score and assigned an overall tameness score. Among the factors that went into the score, was a tendency to approach a human experimenter standing at the front of their pen, and to bite the experimenter when they tried to touch them. Dmitri tried to ensure that the pup's tameness was a result of genetic selection, and not of human interaction, by not subjecting the foxes to any kind of training and allowing them only brief permitted periods of contact with people. This methodology allowed Dmitri to test whether over generations foxes were getting tamer and tamer, and if the domestication syndrome traits would appear if they selected breeding pairs strictly based on tameness. Starting from a population what amounted to that of wild foxes gained from a fur farm, within six generations by selecting for tameness and tameness alone, Dmitri and Trutt had a new class of elite foxes which had behaviour more like that of a puppy than that of a fox. They wagged their tails when humans approached, happily licked the hands of the scientists, loved to be picked up and petted, and also whined when the humans left them alone. All of this happened within only six years, as these foxes were bred annually, and this is obviously an astonishingly fast transformation in behaviour. However, around the 30th generation, around 70-80% to 80% of foxes born were classified as elite or friendly to humans. Dmitri was correct that selection on tameness alone would result in a species becoming tame, 
but he was also right that it would lead to the emergence of the domestication syndrome traits. In less than 10 years, some of the domesticated foxes had floppy ears and curly tails. Their average glucocortoid stress hormone levels by the 15th generation were about half the stress levels of a wild fox. Over the generations, their adrenal glands became smaller and smaller, while their average serotonin levels increased, producing animals which were calmer and happier to be around humans. Over the course of the experiment, the scientists also found the domesticated foxes displayed multicoloured fur, more like the fur pattern of dogs and foxes, and they had shorter, rounder, more juvenile facial features and body shapes. The foxes, like many domesticated animals, had longer reproductive periods than their wild counterparts, so overall, it appeared that Dimitri was right. However, he didn't guess all the changes that would happen, because a 2005 paper by Hare, Trutt and others showed that these foxes selective attainers also follow the human gaze just like a dog. So even without actively selecting for traits conductive to protection or hunting, these foxes had developed a skill as a byproduct of the domestication process. So, does this all prove that Dimitri was right, that as hypothesized the process of domestication was in part a result of changes in gene expression patterns? Well, a recent 2018 study by Wang and others showed that there are significant genetic differences between foxes selected for tameness and those selected for aggression, all of which suggests Dimitri was correct. However, perhaps it was more complicated than simple genetic difference. A 2014 paper by Wilkins, Rangham and Fitch proposed a unifying theory on how domestication syndrome happens so consistently across domesticated species. They hypothesized that during an animal's early embryonic development, a reduction in the amount of neural crest cells that migrate to locations like the glands of the endocrine system, bones, fur, cartilage and the brain, result in changes in fur coloration, facial structure and the strength of cartilage in the ears and tail, the differences in hormonal levels and the length of the reproductive season. This hypothesis may provide the link that Dimitri was missing when he came up with the experiment that domesticated the fox. However, it is not over yet. Despite Dimitri spending 26 years of his life breeding these foxes, he eventually died of cancer in 1985. After his death, his protege, Trutt, continued his work and brought international attention to it. Trutt believed that Dimitri would be pleased with the posthumous result of his experiment, in that they have been able to compress into a few decades an ancient process that originally unfolded over thousands of years. The experiment continues to this day, headed up by Trutt. However, it could have all gone so very differently if the communists had got their way. But, unfortunately I'm stretched for time. And so, if you want to hear about that, you'll have to listen to the next episode of the Zoology Podcast, where we discuss how nonsensical adherence to ideology almost resulted in a domesticated fox never existing at all.